this project started because the government was interested in developing better ways for us to connect to the brain. So we have this massive amount of data coming in, massive amount of data trying to go out. And they've been thinking, how can we make it more efficient for us to communicate? Normally, when we think about tapping into people's brains, we're like, whoa, hold on a minute. Like, I don't want to have some kind of surgical implant or microchip or something like that. Um, and it's really not a, a viable way forward if we're just talking about a healthy subject or a healthy person, a healthy soldier trying to control uh, his or her drone better. And so, given this fact that we want to be able to communicate more quickly with our external device, we don't want to have surgery. Can we come up with a non-surgical way, an external device, a helmet, a hat, that would allow us to capture signals from the brain and stimulate the brain as though we were sitting in front of a monitor? And that's the big idea, this non-surgical neural interface. So it sounds a little wacky. Is this, is this even possible? And so we began um, by simply looking at what are the physical processes we could use? What are the techniques we, that might give us the ability to communicate with the brain through the skull? So we started this in, in a very exploratory phase. And we looked at how we might be able to use magnetic fields and how we might be able to use light both of these things can penetrate the skull. And we wanted to understand if signals from the magnetic field and from light would allow us to record and stimulate the brain. As the magnet turns on, the flies are stimulated. So we're working to stimulate their brain uh, using nanoparticles that I've already injected into the flies. So when people hear about programs that are designed to build a brain interface, particularly programs funded by the government, people naturally get concerned. And what I want to make clear is that the systems we're developing are really designed to help patients. You know, the long-term vision is that maybe these technologies could help people who are um, healthy individuals who might want to have a better way to control a, a drone or um, other autonomous vehicles. But most immediately what we're thinking about are ways that we can help patients who are blind. For example, Individuals who have lost the ability to see, what scientists have been able to show is that if, if I stimulate parts of the brain that are associated with vision, those patients can get a sense of vision even though their eyes no longer work. And so the technology that we're developing now are technologies to stimulate the brain in specific ways. And specifically, we're stimulating the parts of the sensory system so that you can recover a little bit of your sense of vision and playing that forward to what this might mean um, for people in the private sector, people in the military, this would be an alternative to your display. And so the idea is that we would have some kind of a helmet that would be able to uh, stimulate your brain in such a way that you would be able to see as though you had a display in front of you, a heads up display, so to speak, that would be um, uh, activating the parts of your brain associated with vision. One of the things that has helped us be successful with this program is that Rice has invested uh, a lot of resources in creating a world-class neuroengineering program. So the Neuroengineering Initiative has allowed us to build out new lab spaces where we can bring uh, the people on the team together into one physical location. And students and postdocs can move between the labs, they can develop technology in one space and move next door to another lab where they can test it. And all of these facilities and the excellent people that have come in to join the initiative is really the reason why we've been able to be successful.